Hello everyone, bringing you a video today looking at a recreation of a private in the 3rd Battalion Royal Australian Regiment in Korea in October of 1950. Now I had initially hoped to be able to make a video looking at the men of 3 RAR on their arrival in Korea, which was the end of last month, the end of September. Unfortunately, various bits and pieces haven't come together. I've not been able to put together the kit to properly represent that, properly show that. So that's probably a video for the future unfortunately won't fall on the anniversary, which is what I've tried to do with these, with this ongoing series looking at uh, British Commonwealth forces in Korea, but hopefully I'll cover that topic going forward. Subsequent to their arrival in Korea, 3RAR joined the 27th Infantry Brigade, of course the British Brigade, which had been deployed from Hong Kong, and the brigade was renamed the 27th British Commonwealth Brigade, and the addition of 3RAR made a big difference to the brigade's fighting ability, obviously another infantry battalion in addition to the two which were already part of the brigade. However, the brigade, nicknamed the Woolworth Brigade, uh, still had to rely on US supporting arms uh, to keep it in the field, basically. And it was not a fully constituted brigade as we've already been over. But the addition of an extra infantry battalion in the form of 3RAR certainly enhanced its fighting ability. The brigade moved north with the general advance on the Yalu River, the offensive uh, following the landings at Inshon. And what we're looking at here at this time period, 29th and 30th of October, was the Battle of Chongju. Now this is essentially as far north as 27th Commonwealth Infantry Brigade managed to get uh, before the Chinese entered the war in force. Now Chinese forces were already entering North Korea at this point, much as the higher echelons of the UN command didn't realise it. Uh, there were already Chinese forces crossing the Alu River uh, in the latter weeks of October. So the Battle of Chongju is sort of a high watermark for the British Commonwealth Brigade uh, in advancing north. And the battle was quite hard fought. Uh, US supporting arms were involved as well, but it was uh, the capture of the town by 27th Commonwealth Infantry Brigade. So what we're going to look at here, as I say, is a recreation of relatively typical kit from this time period, although even at this early stage of Australian involvement there's quite a lot of variation in the kit worn and how it was worn and so forth. But this is one example and we'll look at more going forward. I'm going to look at a video hopefully looking at 27 and 29th Infantry Brigades compared and obviously 3RAR will be included in that as well perhaps with a bit of variation on the kit that we're going to look at here. So looking at this recreation we can see the majority of the uniform and equipment is Australian issue. However, US jacket has been added, the US field jacket has been added, and we'll get into that as we talk about this in a little bit more detail. The weapon carried is of course the short magazine Lee Enfield, of course by this point known as the rifle number one Mark III Star. This would remain the standard Australian issue rifle through until the adoption of the SLR, the L1A1, essentially the imperial version of the FAL, which was introduced later on in the 1950s. Looking at the uniform, we'll start at the top as we normally do, and as you can see here, headdress consists of the slouch hat, which was worn in preference by many Australian troops, although Mark II helmets are also occasionally seen as well. As you can see, the brim, which could be turned up on the left-hand side, has been turned down, and this is the common way that slouch hats were worn in the field. The basic uniform consists of Australian wool service dress, a jacket and trousers made in wool serge, the jacket being of a pattern introduced during the Second World War. Over this is worn a US M1943 field jacket, as you can see here, and this is worn with the hood attached, which was very common to see amongst Commonwealth troops. The hood was quite a common and popular addition to the jacket. The web equipment worn is 1937 pattern of various origins, and as already seen, this is worn in something of a stripped down configuration with even the haversack removed, basically a fighting load consisting of ammunition and water. You can see the basic pouches at the front here carrying ammunition, and over the right hand pouch a bandolier carrying extra 303 ammunition for the rifle has also been slung. On the left hip we can see the bayonet for the rifle number one Mark III star, carried in a standard webbing frog. And round on the right hip we can see the enamel water bottle in its felt cover, carried in a carrier of Australian design. This is part of the late Second World War modified 1937 pattern web equipment which Australia produced, which I hope to cover in more detail in a video going forward. This includes a wider band around the middle of the bottle which has C-clips attached, meaning it can be clipped to the belt as well as being carried on the brace ends, as we see here. Footwear consists of Australian black leather ankle boots, 
And in this instance, these are worn with anklets associated with the 1937 pattern web equipment, these particular examples being of Canadian manufacture. These were worn alongside the Australian-made three-buckle gaiters, which have been introduced late in the Second World War. So there we are. That's a rundown of the basic uniform and equipment typical of this time. There was quite a bit of variation, and I've tried to talk a little bit about some of those variations that were seen at the time. The Australian War Memorial has an excellent collection of photographs from the Korean War, obviously not only 1950, but right the way through the war. And this is an excellent reference if you'd like to see some of the variations in uniform and kit, not only on an individual basis, but also how the uniform and, and equipment changed throughout the war, and depending on the season as well, of course. And of course, there will be more videos going forward looking at Australian troops throughout the conflict and other Commonwealth forces as well, of course. So there we are. I hope you found it interesting looking at that recreation. As I say, I had hoped to make a video for 3RAR's arrival in Korea, which is essentially a month prior to this, but unfortunately that wasn't possible. So we have this video instead. And as I say, I'll probably cover that topic going forward, um, but not actually on sort of the, the 70th anniversary, which is what I've been aiming for with the rest of this series. But uh, nevertheless, I hope you found it interesting, as I always say. If you have, and you'd like to see more from the channel, then please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the little notification button down below, which of course will alert you when I upload future videos, including those in this series. If you'd really like my uploads and you'd like to support the channel, you can. There's Patreon and PayPal linked down below. And a massive thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It really is very much appreciated, as I always say. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. There's Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter all linked down below. And if you'd like to make contact with me, but you don't really use social media, there is an email address down there as well. But that's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now. <laughs>